But I know we have a packed audience today, and I know you guys have questions. So, and what's going to happen, because we're being taped today, when you ask a question, I'm going to repeat it, because our director, Jennifer Kortner, is here, and she always directs me. So repeat it, and then let Edie answer it. So who wants to go first? Christina Buweri, first question. Questions. The first one is, how many hours a night do you sleep? How many hours a night does Edie sleep is the first one. And the second one? Uh, how do you relax? And how do you relax? Well, those are really good questions. I, I, how many of you need sleep? Raise your hand, okay? Well, me too, all right? So I need seven hours of sleep, right? So I basically, um, after I talk to my dad at midnight, go to bed, right? And basically try not to get up till seven in the morning. So that's basically is, and some of us need sleep to really be healthy, which is extremely important, right? And I think is, what do we do to relax? Well, like I think you, Cynthia, I mean, I love to cook, right? I love to read. The one thing is I read seven newspapers a day, right? So I, ha and I've been doing it for so many years, but that means my husband says it's just, I must be very dumb to have to read seven newspapers a day, <laughs> right? Because it gets repetitious, but you never know. I love to take an hour every night, wherever, doing that because you never know the particular story that you see or what that is just extremely important to your life or to somebody else that is just extremely important. I need to ask you, so you relax by reading the newspaper. What, what are the, what are the pa newspapers you read? What do you read? Well, the Wall Street Journal and the Washington Post and the Washington Times and USA Today and the New York Times and the Financial Times are really the key. Right. Wow, good for you. That's impressive, very impressive. Who else has a question? Misty Burmeister? Uh -huh. um, for, 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 first of all, Edie, um, I love you and I don't believe a thing you say about sleep. We got, <laughs> got emails from you at 2 o'clock in the morning before when you were supposedly taking a bath. <laughs> Thanks, Misty. Um, but you said something really important today. You said that it's about sisterhood and about helping each other to achieve our dreams and to around um, more seasoned women helping younger women and they're not because there's a perception that younger women need to do it a certain way before they'll be helped. And I wonder if you can reflect on that because you do not reflect that uh, statistic at all. You'll help anybody and everybody who comes in your way and truthfully uh, I would not be where I'm at today if it weren't for you, Edie. Um, Thank you, Miss. mine for, since I started my business and uh, I'm grateful for you but I want you to reflect on a little bit that seasoned women not wanting to help younger women because don't you know we work so hard to create these opportunities and there's a certain way that you should respond to us. So the question, just to reframe the question, was, um, and that was asked by Misty Burmeister, the author of From Boomers to Bloggers, and she was asking about access for younger women to more seasoned women, like fine wine, um, to find <laughs> out, you know, how, number one, for younger women to approach more seasoned women. Um, for mentoring, but also the expectation from the other side of the coin, where those of us who are kind of there, who've been through the trenches, it seems like maybe there, there's a perceived disconnect. What do you think? Hopefully it's changing, right? And I think what you got to do is find those women that really will give back, for sure, and is thank those women who will give back. Um, and is that we've got to change that in terms of women not giving back. And so I think that's one thing. I think that we realize that young women uh, have a lot to offer us, okay? So is I went up Wednesday, last Wednesday night because Hillary and uh, Joe Biden, there was an event at a private home in Philadelphia and I took a young woman who I met years and years ago who runs a company called Buzz Marketing. Right? She started at 13 years old and basically is now 28 years old. And so when I called her, I said, Tina, so how many people are you employed? She said, 89,000 and 7,500 in the U.S. and 1,500 and what she's got. So we too have got to learn from younger women because you're teaching us technology 
you're teaching us new marketing and social marketing and so is I mean Catherine Ramsey you and Andrew are here but you know I still have got to learn from you guys about using Facebook LinkedIn et cetera, et cetera. so if we're smart we realize that young people have a lot to teach us I absolutely that is one of the things in fact Misty and I've often had that discussion that it's reverse mentoring now right any woman who is out there it's been there she really needs to have the support and assistance so it's a, it's a mutual mentoring thing and they're not exclusive from each other so critical 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 grab yourself a young chick and friend her because she'll teach you a lot <laughs> that's what I say <laughs> who else has a question Melinda on that same subject of mentoring because I think it's a really important subject what kind of programs have you put together to help mentoring and I, I believe in it both ways by you know grabbing that young chick as well as the reverse what we have funding. to offer in the re reverse. So yeah, yeah. was asking question has to do what kind of programs has Edie been involved in putting together in the mentoring realm? A lot. All right. So let's just say I think what's so important is that's the mentoring is characteristics of a lot of the women's organizations but it's true the major corporations truly have mentoring programs law firms professional firms so I think it's it's taking advantage of those but it's also seeking out those that you respect the most to really get their advice and get it sometimes they don't have time to meet with you but they'll do a phone call all right which is what I will willing to do it's just that you really focus on that time and attention to really and look at it as a two-way learning which is extremely extremely important what do you think about affirmative action in companies or affirmative oh, I, th action I, I think it's I think it's basically a sign of the past all right it's just basically and the same things true in higher education it's we have to do it because you got to present the data but if you do not see the impact of women and diversity overall as a business opportunity, as basically impacting what your bottom line is, then you're not into basically the competitive realm of being the best in class to understand new markets. If we don't understand that gay and lesbians buy three times as much as straight people in terms of products and services because they've got the discretionary income. If we don't understand all of that adds up, adds up, adds up that black women buy more cosmetics two to one over white women, et cetera. I mean, we can go through and we just understand is everything that we know is basically new products, new services, and the excitement of understanding what great business it is. Yeah. Great point. Okay, well, okay, right here, Bev. Okay. Um, comment first about um, diversity. I'm a cert 16 year old certified um, woman in business, and corporations are starting to ask me right. as a small company what programs we have set up and how, what percentage of diversified businesses we use. So it's Good. Get reversed. My question is. Um, so, um, Ever since we began our company, we have a given program, but it's more what I want to do, what I want to give, and I know I need to convert that over to, you know, a more company-wide, what, who do we want to give to as a whole? How do you set up a program to maybe have employees' inputs um, to decide, you know, okay, let's um, give to this local group? I mean, what's a good system to... So well, it's a really good question. It's a longer, so I think the question is? The question is, what do you do in your company? You know, sometimes you as an entrepreneur have things you want to give to, but how do you engage your entire company to become in selecting what you should be gifting to or what as a whole to reflect a stronger voice in giving? And there are several ways. It's a much longer discussion because you can decide one area that you pick as a team for the whole company that everybody wants to pick and then you can divide that up and everybody can pick something in that area you can pick one thing that the whole team wants to go for and really make that a big marketing and really set some objectives and everybody you can prove who wants to give money who wants to give time and all plan that out so there's just a variety of ways to approach it if you really want to make a team approach all right I think on your other thing of being certified there's never been a more important time 
to get certified as woman-owned business. And we just did that with our executive search firm, even though it's been woman-owned for 34 years. I've only been with it a year and a half. But it's extremely important. It's important for corporations. It's important for organizations. It's important to government. So is congratulations, and thank you for mentioning it. Is it hard to get women certified? No, I think is you, what you got to do is be 51 percent woman owned. Okay, excellent. Okay, we'll go back second row, and I'll come to you, Donna. You, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so well, that's the key I, to make it, let's reframe the question because the director will get mad at me. So what do we need to do, make changes in the health care system to lower rates? That's like a three or four hour answer, <laughs> right? And, and it is so important. You know, the problem that we've got right now is does that get on the radar screen fast enough because the jobs picture is and the mortgage picture is so important, but bringing those rates down is just really important. And even our own firm and other firms are going to be demanding that more employees also pay more share because companies and, you know, small businesses and big companies, but small business, we may say the General Motors is being brought down because of their health care cost. That's, a lot of that's true. But the fact is, it's just one of the reasons, but the, but the fact is small business are being killed because of health care costs. So it's, it's got to change, and, and hopefully it will change, uh, but I think we're in a crisis right now on the economy where they may not come first. Okay, we've got time for two more questions. I'm going to go this side of the room, Kathy, and I'm going to come over to Don. Um, quick question. The past couple of years I've had an opportunity to mentor some graphic design students. Good. And my dream came true last year. We offered a graphic design scholarship to these students. In your opinion, what's a great way to help other companies, whether they're one singly owned or a larger company, to think about offering scholarships? People that find out that we've done that, they said they've never thought of that. And what a great way to do it from being privately owned would make a difference. Well, this the question. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The director's here. We have to obey her. I get yelled at. Um, the question has to do with setting up scholarships inside your company to help um, people who are coming up through their skill sets. In your company, you, you did a scholarship, it's Kathy Ritten who said she did a scholarship inside her company for graphic designers. So I thought that was a really great idea. I've never heard of that. So she was asking Edie what she thinks about that concept and how to get that out there. Kathy, it's very important. You know, scholarships do not have to be enormous, as you know, right? because whether it's $100 or $500, I've, I've helped a Howard student, et cetera, et cetera, just personally do it. And so the message is that you and your company can set up a scholarship because it doesn't have to be enormous. Every little bit helps is something that I think you can share in sessions like this, all right? It's like we help set up the SCORE scholarship program as I gave the example with my dad. It's just you can impact the companies that you meet or the trade associations or professional associations that you belong to by asking them if they will really set up that kind and share what they're doing and publicize what they're doing to really support those scholarships, right? Which is really important. Excellent. Right. Okay, and our last question, Donna. Edie, I would like to know, since you have done such a great job Thank you, Donna, Who's for been, that. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Who's been your role model and mentor was the uh, question. Well, I, I think my parents did impact a great deal in my life, which is extremely important. And it's also, if you look for the people <laughs> that you really respect of what they say, when you look at Maya Angelou and is not only of what she's written and said about giving, but things that I wish that I had done that she said, get rid of all the whiners in your life, she says, right? So I think I could name those. I also name those friendships of mine that I think about in this giant sisterhood 
of people that are extremely important, uh, like my friend Flory Roberts and others, because I think we counsel one another and is that is so valued and so appreciated and is I think that for those relationships I said gratitude is our attitude is that it's so important to let people know our thanks for all that. Okay, I get the last question just because I got the C. <laughs> okay, so who's your best girlfriend? Who's your best girlfriend? This is really hard because <laughs> is anybody's gonna that's, see and go, I thought I was your best girlfriend, uh, but there's gotta be that one girl. And that's that, happened, all right. So I'm not so gonna I know, I I'm not gonna popular. answer. That. I know but I know you're very, very popular. But, but do you have a really tight knit group I, of girlfriends? I do, but I probably have ten women, uh, all ages that I'm really, really close to and and, and I pay a lot of deference and support to those relationships and and basically, they're really, really important, right? And they're in different areas, but they're extremely do you important. Talk, do you talk to at least one of your girlfriends every day? Yep. Every day? Yeah, yep. I think that that's really powerful. I think every woman in this world has this, in, especially in this room, has a really close friend that she talks to almost every day. And you right. have that sense. It really helps you work through all the challenges we face in our life. Totally. Edie? This has been phenomenal. I can't thank you enough. And because you are such an incredible gift, we have a gift for you today. It is the very famous Success in the City business card holder, which is a coveted asset, which works very well as a wallet, too. So we thank you. So um, well, thank you. can we say thanks to Cynthia? <laughs> thank you. Thank you, honey. You're wonderful. This has been wonderful. This has been wonderful. Right. Can we say thank you to Cynthia and to all of you for what you represent? I think that we've, we keep teaching each other and is as we value each other's time. So thank you, Cynthia, for what you're building. And I look around the room and I just want to say thank you for a lot of people to come today. All right. And is I think what we also need to learn is wherever we've got money, we or time we support each other so if it's buying from each other or supporting each other it's basically critical to really show that sisterhood definitely and you're you're so right and i just so appreciate it now